First, then, uh, your full name and your occupation. My name is Tom Hay, and I'm chairman of the Fishermen's Association Limited in Scotland. Short for Fishermen's Association Limited, it is called FAL. Uh, how many members? We have about 140 members, all told. That's not all boats. I couldn't just tell you how many boats we have, but we have 140, maybe it's getting up to about 150 members now, I would reckon. Uh, then you're talking about boats? No, I'm talking about members. I'm not sure how many boats actually paying, uh, levy paying members we'd have at the, mo at the moment, but say it would be in the region of 65 or 70 at the moment. Uh, you, you split it from the Scottish Fishermen Federation some years ago. Why was that? The main reason was that the truth was not being told to British fishermen about what they were likely to expect at the end of the temporary management system which ended on the 31st of December 2002. What, uh, what was the truth? Well, the truth was simply this, that the, in the, within the European Union, in Brussels, a single European Union fishing fleet is being established on the principle of non-discrimination and without increasing fishing effort, which clearly meant that British fishermen had to be driven out of what was once their own fishing grounds and what should now be their own fishing grounds to make way for the rest of the European Union nations based on the principle of equal access to a common resource. The wording of the treaty says this, all community fishermen must have equal access to and use of the fishing grounds falling under the sovereignty and coming within the jurisdiction of the member states. Now, I ask you this question, the Icelandic fishermen. How can a major fishing nation like Spain with 19,000 ships be accommodated within the British sector of the North Sea, fully integrated by European law into the common fisheries policy on the principle of non-discrimination and without increasing fishing effort? It simply means, as I have just said, that British fishermen have to be driven out of their own fishing grounds to let the rest of the member states' fishermen in. But uh, why are the British fishermen uh, being uh, offered in that way? I beg your pardon? Uh, why, why are the British fishermen, uh, why are they being uh, offered? Uh, why are you losing? Why aren't you winning? Why are the, why, why are the Spains winning? Why, why are you losing? Oh, oh, why are we losing? because we have agreed to it by treaty. The British Parliament in 1972 signed our Treaty of Accession to the European Union. Now this is how it works. New member states who join the European Union must accept existing community legislation in its entirety and subscribe to the common policies. There are no exceptions to that rule apart from those agreed upon for a transitional period. N new nations coming into the European Union must accept the e principle of equal access to and use of the fishing grounds. They must also give up theirs. They must allow equal access by all the other member states to their fishing grounds. That's why we're losing, because the British Parliament has transferred exclusive legal competence to Brussels for the conservation and management of all living marine resources in what ought to be British waters. That's the reason. And this is happening right now, in this year and the next year? This is happening right now. Every member state gets a derogation of a certain amount of years. Perhaps they cannot cope with the full thrust of the treaty all at once. And of course also the Brussels bureaucracy does not want the population of the nation coming in to know that they are transferring everything that belongs to them to a foreign power. 
and they give a derogation. A derogation is simply a transitional temporary management system which has a terminus. Every derogation has a terminus. And the terminus to the derogation that Britain had ran out on the 31st of December 2002. We now move into the full thrust of the treaty, which is equal access by all member states fishermen to a common resource. What will happen now in the near future? The clear intention of the treaties is that they are directed against the survival of the British fishing industry. The British fishing industry substantially will be wiped out to make way for the newcomers. Of that there isn't the slightest doubt. The treaties are all there to be read. Anybody can read the treaties. I say to the person that's interviewing me just now, you can read the treaties. You don't have to take my word for it. You read the treaties. Spain, the Spanish treaty, has granted to Spain equal access without discrimination to the North Sea from the 1st of January 2003. And as I have said, how can we take they, them in without discrimination, without increasing fishing effort, without first driving our fishermen out? And that's what all the throttling regulations are for, to drive the British fishermen out of what ought to be their own waters to allow the rest of the member states, Spain in particular, but others as well, to have free, equal access without discrimination to the lucrative fishing grounds of the North Sea. Has the common fisheries policy been good for uh, British fisheries? For a start, the common fisheries policy was good. It was the trap that was set to ensnare our fishermen and to make them believe that the common fisheries policy was forever. As I have said to you, we have not been operating until the 1st of January this year under the common fisheries policy. We have been operating under a temporary derogation from the full thrust of the equal access to a common resource principle. Now, I would just like to say something else here for the sake of the Icelandic people. Marine geography has conferred an extraordinary bounty on the British people. We have more than sufficient living marine resources in the North Sea and in the Eastern Atlantic, the west side of the United Kingdom, to keep the British fleet economically viable. But we do not have sufficient living marine resources to keep the fishermen of 15 or more member states fishermen economically viable and that is precisely the objective of the common fisheries policy. Would you like to give any advice to your Icelandic colleagues? Yes I would. I have already given uh, some of my Faroese colleagues uh, this advice. I have also given some of my Norwegian colleagues this advice. Whatever you do, maintain the sovereignty of the land that you love. Have nothing whatever to do with giving away your sovereignty to a foreign power. It is absolutely disastrous. The real origins of this disaster in the British fishing industry lie in the surrender of our fishing grounds, our fishing rights, our fish stocks to a foreign power. There is no doubt whatever about it that if Iceland does the same, you will find yourself in the most disastrous of all situations because you're out in the periphery in Iceland. Same with Faroe, same with Shetland, out in the periphery. Your whole community will die out. If you give way and surrender your fishing grounds to the European Union, your nation and your nation's sovereignty will no longer remain. You want to maintain that sovereignty at all costs and stand tall amongst the rest of the nations in the world. What I would like to see is the United Kingdom free itself from the shackles of this unwieldy power in Brussels and link up with perhaps the Scandinavian nations, Norway and Denmark, perhaps Sweden as well, Finland, Iceland, Faroe, Greenland, 
we can live together without any trouble at all. It's an absolute lie that we are being told that we cannot survive without being in the European Union. They need us. We certainly don't need them.